everybody, what's going on? Chris here from Chris Travels. I've been traveling the United States for the last six years now in uh, different camper vans, and I've had some run-ins with cops, and I'm going to go over those right now. So, the first time that I had a run-in with a cop, I was actually in Bloomington, Indiana. I was taking a class um, at Indiana University. I was living in my camper van outside of campus. I can link the video here. Uh, it only lasted for a short amount of time. That's because somebody called the cops on me basically <clears throat> excuse me what I was doing I parked my uh, my camper off campus then I would ride my bike onto campus go to class work out take a shower then come back to the van later at night once it cooled down because it was still pretty warm um, it was actually very warm like I would wake up just kind of sweaty and uh, what happened one night I got up to use the bathroom in, in the class B and I turned the light on and I think one of the neighbors saw that and they called the cops the next morning I uh, get woken up to knocking on the window um, there's a couple cops there um, they actually brought two patrol cars to, uh, to to root me out of there I guess but uh, I tried holding still and like we know you're in there because um, on the back windows there's still a slit so I'm sure they looked in there first saw me sleeping and you know, because I just, I laid there at first, they were rocking the van, hitting the window, and I finally answered the door, and they asked me what I was doing, I just happened to have um, one of my, my DSLR out, and they're like, are you taking photos of the neighborhood around here? It's like, no, I'm just going to school at IU, um, I have a class, I can show you my my class schedule, like, I'm, I'm just going to school. Like, well, the neighbors complain, and you're not supposed to sleep in town, I mean, after research, and I don't think there's an ordinance that actually says that, but they said I had to move and that I can't sleep in my vehicle in that neighborhood. And they kicked me out and then I ended up uh, sleeping on my friend's living room floor for a while until I finished the classes. But that was the first, uh, the first run in with cops. Um, I will say this right now, the first van I had was a complete stealth van. Um, it was a van that was not a class B. It was just a regular Ford Econoline. Uh, I took the, uh, the middle seats out and uh, added a bed in the back. I'll go ahead and link that, that van right here. Um, I never had any run-ins with the cops. Granted, that was only a month and a half long trip. I drove around with my Husky, and I was staying at friends' houses. I did like a big tour around the United States seeing my friends. So there wasn't that much um, urban and stealth camping. I was mostly staying at either Walmart or uh, friends' places. The, uh, the second run-in I had was actually the first large trip I took with my Class B. Uh, we basically went from Indiana, a friend and I went from Indiana to Denver, picked up another friend, and we went up to Sturgis and uh, went up there and just stayed in the van and partied. It was awesome. We stayed about a 10 minute walk from downtown Sturgis. And the only reason why we got busted, like we were fine the, the entire time. And you know what? I honestly think the cops, is, is in Sturgis, for example, and this varies throughout the United States, in Sturgis, you know, as long as you're not causing problems, as long as you're being quiet, you're okay. The problem was we weren't being quiet, we weren't partying, but our generator was on because it was super hot, we were really hungover, and we just wanted to take a nap. So we had the generator on, had the air conditioning running, and uh, the cops came and said we can, couldn't stay there, but we were planning on leaving later that day anyway. So that was completely fine. The cops were um, completely genial. They're like, hey, city ordinance, we can't have you stay in the vehicle, I think, the whole time because we were on like a big party street, um, even though it was not close to downtown but they they were just like hey you know like you got you got to move and we completely understood and shut down the generator and headed up to the uh, the Black Hills doing a trip up there right after Sturgis so that was completely fine um, another run-in that I had with cops it was no talking this is actually where the cops did something awesome and I was very thankful for what they did uh, I was basically merging onto traffic and those that have driven a class B, those 20 foot motorhomes, sometimes it's hard to get into traffic. They don't accelerate too fast and if people just sit there, you can't brake that fast, you can't accelerate, you kind of get in a bad situation. Um, this guy refused to let me in. I put my turn signal on way before. It was a long, um, you know, kind of intersection where he could have let me in on this highway and he didn't and he was just looking at me. You know, like it was almost like he's doing it on purpose. There was a cop behind us and the cop pulled him over because he eventually uh, like I just had to slow down like I almost had to stop on the highway and then finally I sped up the cop went around me and he pulled the guy over um, so that's that's another run-in that I've had with the cops in terms of camper vans the other time that something happened with with my camper van was when I got towed in Arizona uh, 
basically it was a, I was working at a bar, I think it was St. Patrick's Day or something, and it was right next to ASU campus, so parking was just completely backed up. Like, I, I had to get to work, I just parked real quick, and what happened was there was people that actually were jumping over the sidewalk and parking in their front yard, and that was their driveway. And it was just regular sidewalk, there was no divot down in the road. I parked my van right there, so I didn't see any driveway, I just saw that it was just a sidewalk, there were no signs. And and got towed, and you know that that definitely wasn't a uh, a good situation to be in, especially when it's your home. Like I ended up uh, luckily I had friends I could crash with, but that was a very unfortunate situation. The next time that I had a run in with a cop was in Eureka, California. I was going from Arizona to Alaska. Um, just did a big camper van trip. I'll link that um, for to, to here, but. Uh, Basically what happened was it's kind of the same situation in Bloomington except it was at night and this is further in my camper van experience like that was I had that camper van maybe a month when the cops stopped me in Bloomington. By this time I realized that there's certain things you can do to set up your camper so cops can't really do anything if you do um, stealth camping. One of the things that I did was I made sure the back by the bed area was completely shielded. You know I just had all the blinds completely closed and in the back of the camper van, whenever I'm urban camping or doing anything um, like boondocking, I never make my bed. I always just kind of throw covers and just sleep under that. And then there's a little area where you can cut off that back bedroom area. I always leave that open. That way if a cop has flashlight like this cop did, he can shine it back or all it does look like a big pile of clothes. And he couldn't see in. Like he was knocking like all around my, my window. Like throughout, like shaking the van saying, Eureka Police Department, let me, I need to talk to you, you can't stay in there, I know you're in there. And it, it literally got to the point where he was knocking on the window so much, I started playing Angry Birds on, on my phone. Like, he just would not leave. And he kept, he would knock and he'd go back to his car, and he'd turn his car off, and then I, I, I heard him turn his car off, then he'd wait 10 minutes and turn it back on, come back up, you know, like he was just trying to root me out, and I wasn't letting him do it. And, uh, yeah, because they, they, they can't prove that you're in your vehicle versus staying in somebody's house, you know, so they're, they're not going to tow it. And that was definitely an eye-opening experience, and I ended up, once he left, I ended up staying there all night, woke up five hours later, and continued on to Alaska. Next experience, this is actually an entire year passed by the time this next experience happened. Uh, basically what happened, it was another trip up from Arizona to Alaska. Uh, this time we were in Eureka, California. It's interesting that I bring up California two times in a row, huh? Out of all those thousands of miles. Uh, basically what happened, uh, my girlfriend and I were on our way up. We stopped in Napa. It was early in the morning. We were about to go see or do a wine tasting at a, uh, at a vineyard. And uh, just figured it would uh, it'd be cool to kind of get some coffee, eat some breakfast in the van before we headed up. Uh, my girlfriend went over to the park to do some yoga and then I was just editing YouTube videos actually and uh, this cop comes up. And I'll actually go ahead and link the, I had a GoPro going while this cop come up. I had a couple GoPros actually and um, he's completely genial, you know, he was just checking on me but what happened was it wasn't him coming to check on me necessarily out of his like, oh what's this guy doing? Somebody in that neighborhood actually called the cops on my girlfriend and I while she was doing yoga in the park and I was editing YouTube videos said that we were suspicious people and you know like it's I don't know it could, could just be that that area that mindset you know but yeah somebody called the cops on us and he just came up and he asked us he wasn't being rude about it he wasn't you know kinda of looking down on us he just was doing his due diligence somebody called and he had to go check it out so you know that's that that, that is what it is other situation that uh, that happened was actually I have a DJI Phantom and I went out and I was actually flying the Phantom in a public park and um, somebody called the cops on me and said that I was spying on the neighborhood because I had my camper van out there and we were out there uh, you know flying flying a drone spying on the neighborhood and I did a video quick video on that I'll go ahead and link it to this as well just kind of mentioning how all it takes is one person you know to to kind of ruin it like you can be out there having a great time exploring and it just takes one person to call the cops and you know you can't stay there because you're spying on the neighborhood with a drone like like we're casing out neighborhoods with my DJI Phantom like some, 
aerial imaging that I use for my YouTube channel. You know, I'm I'm actually spending all that money just to break into houses. Are you, you know, it's kind of frustrating. But um, some points I want to talk about, um, like kind of bringing everything back together, is um, a lot of the the cop instances happened in Arizona and California, um, Oregon, Washington all throughout Canada and Alaska. Like, I urban camped in Alaska. You can park on the side of the road absolutely anywhere. It's absolutely free. And it's just the mentality up there. Like, the cops are, every cop I've met up there has been completely nice, you know, just talks to you as, as a person, you know. Like, it's, it's just been awesome. I absolutely love Alaska. And I've just pulled off on the side of the road and nobody's ever messed with me, you know. But in California, I wake up, and eat breakfast in my van and my girlfriend's doing yoga and I get the cops called on me. Or like the other time I'm parked in a, in a neighborhood and a cop's knocking on my window for a half an hour trying to see if I'm in there. You know, like it's, it's just different mentalities on, on where you go. But overall, I, from the, the pattern that I've seen, as long as you're congenial with, with the police officer, as long as you're being honest, everything's gonna work out fine. Like a lot of times there really is no set law on uh, on urban camping now it, I mean different town to town but from from my experiences there's been no set thing where somebody can point to it and say this is why you can't do this because it's in the statute or whatever so I've, I've been really fortunate with that um, but definitely if you're urban camping out there just always remember that some people you know they, they, they see a van they see an RV and the first thing they're going to do is call the cops because there's some crazy guy in their neighborhood now that might harm their kids that they saw something on the news, you know, a lot of people out there think the world's completely bad and everybody out there is out to get them, you know, and that's always going to be the way it is, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, that's unfortunate, but that's just not the reality that, that I live in, and, you know, you just got to stay positive and hope for the best, so thanks for watching, hope this is beneficial to you, and uh, have a good day.